And welcome to the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman. We speak about your money, your life, and your investments. And as always, we're coming to you from the spiritual and soon to be cap, soon to be financial capital of the world, Jerusalem, Israel. Why did I get tongue tied? Because it's also the soggy capital of the world right now. It is absolutely pouring. You can see from my glasses and my hair that I got caught outside uh, without an umbrella. So <laughs> it is still the spiritual and soon to be financial capital of the world. Um, we are continuing on with our series on entrepreneurship. And it is my honor to bring to the show Sarah Ranan, who is a visibility coach and personal branding photographer. She works with small business owners who are scaling their businesses while feeling overwhelmed by online space and hesitant to show their faces online. Look at that. That's interesting. Let's get into that. Sarah, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So first of all, what is a personal branding photographer? Right. Yeah, straight in there. Um, so it's one of these things that if you try and Google it, people really struggle to define it. Um, the way I explain it to people is if you have a business, especially a small business, you're an entrepreneur, there's like a team of, of you or two of you, and, pe and you want people to like understand what it is that you do, like what is your vibe, what are your brand values, all of that stuff. Like I will, I will come to the session fully prepared to tell your story we basically collaborate and you know like what 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 lights Aaron up what does Aaron do what does he believe in what does he stand for what does he stand against and we tell that whole story through branding photography it's very different to having a headshot session in a headshot session it's just do this do that you do all different poses you sit on a chair you stand up whatever this is like I come into your world and I take pictures of you doing your thing hmm. and it's actually evolved into taking reels of you doing your thing as well of course and now how did you how did you get into this right you're certainly you're, you're not in israeli uh by birth so you you, yeah. you know there is a story how did you become a personal brand photographer how did i get into brand oh so the story of photography um i was thinking how do i cut the long story short you can we make moved. it a long story <laughs> <laughs> We, we made Aliyah in 97 from England, but we then took three years out in New Jersey um, from 2006 to 2009. My husband went there for work and we followed. And I found myself with all this time on my hands and I'd always, always wanted to get into photography. And he just said, this is your chance, off you go. So I studied photography in a place called Photo Manhattan run by Israelis. Uh, in Manhattan, uh -huh. which was amazing. And in 2007, I opened my own photography studio. And it was just, and I always say this to my clients now, sometimes it's a question of timing. I was in the right place at the right time when people were kind of get, getting a bit fed up of going to picture people in Sears and Target um, and getting like that white background pose and mm -hmm. stuff. But right. they didn't want to go to the high end. There was like a very, very high end, very fancy photographer in the area. They wanted something in the middle and I became that and my business really, really took off. Then we came back to Israel and I basically had to start again. Right. Um, and that was tough because in America, they have a culture of, they appreciate photography. You uh -huh. do your like newborn, you do pregnancy sessions, newborn, six months, nine months, cake smash. Like I had clients in my three years I was there that came to me like eight, nine times. Wow. And then I came back to Israel and hit the ground with a, with a, <laughs> with a thud. It's bar mitzvahs um, and weddings. Yeah. And I tried getting into the Israeli scene and they were like, why would I hire you when I have a smartphone? Or why would I, why would I hire you when it's not like bar mitzvah wedding time? Right. So, um, I slowly started moving over it, like kind of just dipping my toe in the water with different areas. And it wasn't until 2018 when this ad popped up on my Facebook feed of like this woman that was selling training in branding photography. And um, I took her course and I was absolutely hooked. Um, I mean, I could talk about it forever, but basically the thing that I loved from transitioning from family photography to branding photography is that I then got to work one-on-one -on -one with people, understand what their passion is, um, 
understand what brought them to like create their business and you know everything that goes into it it's much more intimate it's it, you go much deeper and that's just I, that's kind of like how I roll I don't do like the superficial have 300 friends and very much like let's go deep kind of thing so you started and then a year and a half later you two years later uh, corona happened and it was, I don't know, like, I don't know your business, but I can just imagine because you have to be with people because <laughs> you have to take pictures of them. You can't yeah. do that through, that's not a Zoom type of a, of a profession. Yeah, and so the moment sort of, when that realization hit was like, oh, yeah. So um, how did you weather the storm? It really was a storm because in 2018, when I set up this business, um, one of the first things I did to kind of like put myself out of my comfort zone and push myself was I started trying to London every quarter and doing, doing like whole days of like maybe three or four clients in a day, I would like rent out a hotel space. Um, and like we'd shoot cause you always have to have an indoor backup in London cause it's always raining. Um, and my business really took off there again. It was like, I found like a gap of like, people weren't doing it yet. Uh, which was amazing in 2018. It was really brand new. Um, and it was just very much word of mouth. And honestly, like if you can run a business of word of mouth, that is gold. Um, every time someone would upload a profile picture and someone would say, wow, who took that? And they would tag me and that's how it would go. Mm -hmm. So I was traveling to London every quarter. I went February, God, what what year did it all begin? 20, 2020? 20, 20. 2020. Beginning of February, 2020, it was my last time in London. I remember people wearing masks on the plane and I thought they were weird. Um, and then March, we found ourselves in lockdown and um, I was looking at what other photographers were doing. Some of them were doing this uh, remote, some people were doing doorstep photography where you get the family to come out and sit on the doorstep and you socially distance and do family portraits. But I didn't want to get back into that. Mm -hmm. And some branding photographers were doing remote photography where you install an app on your phone and the other person is like in their house and you are doing like a remote session controlling their phone. Huh. And I realized I hated it because yeah. I love that energy of being in the same space as my clients. And with this, it just, the, the energy just wasn't there. So what did I do? How did I weather the storm? I had been coaching people for years, like since 2011, but kind of unofficially. I'd never really talked about it. I didn't want to confuse people. I thought you couldn't do two things at the same time. Uh, but I was wrong. I was wrong. Uh, you just have to educate your audience. And I started to educate people. I started off calling myself an Instagram coach. I then worked with a, with a brand coach who said to me, you're not just an Instagram coach. You're all about visibility in your photography and in your coaching. You help people to show up, whether they're scared to get in front of the camera and open their mouths or whether they're just overwhelmed by all the things and they don't know where to begin and they need a system and cheerleading blah 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 whatever it is you are about visibility and she was 100 percent right and here i am <laughs> that's pretty cool um the yeah. life of an entrepreneur is to cons cons consistently reinvent themselves right yeah and i do keep saying that to people about instagram people keep freaking out that it keeps changing i'm like that's it you have to get used to that and nothing's going to stay the same. It's going to like, look at you, like I've been buying iPhones since 2008. They're constantly evolving. You constantly have to learn new things. It's, right. I think it's a good thing. When you grew up, did you like have the bug, right? That you wanted to have your own business or is it something you sort of fell into when you had this, you know, when you were in New Jersey and you had this love of photography and it sort of went for it and, and, and evolved? Like, what was that process like? Yeah, so I think, Growing up, I wanted to be a vet. <laughs> I love animals. Then I very quickly realized I don't like blood and gore. So that was a no. Then I was going to be a therapist. I took a degree in psychology. I was either going to be a marriage guidance counselor or I was going to do art therapy. Side note, my eldest daughter is now going into art therapy, which is crazy. Um, but then we made Aliyah in 97 and I didn't do a master's and I was pregnant had my first child, went into high tech and just kind of forgot about it. You know, like it just didn't happen. I never had that dream or, and I don't think a lot of people of my age um, 
especially the females, if I get in trouble for saying that, I think. Like my husband, for example, he's a lawyer. He'd always dreamt of being a lawyer. Uh-huh. I said, like, I didn't have that. You know, I, I didn't have this like one day I'm going to be my own boss. Mm-hmm. But I did know that I wanted to create. I've always been creative, but I was always looking for a way f- to express it. And then when I was, I think, 17, I picked up a camera. I got my mm-hmm. first proper SLR camera. Mm-hmm. And that's where it you know, began. But it was a long time before I actually realized that I want to be in a job where I can be creative. I realized that the sitting at a desk in corporate just wasn't for me. Okay. And what do you view sort of as like <clears throat> the challenges of being your own boss, of being an entrepreneur, especially when you're doing it in a sort of a foreign country, right? You grew up in London, you started off yeah. in New Jersey, and then you're in Renana, right? In Israel, you you know, sort of had the whole gamut, right? Lots of different cultures and everything like that. What, what's it like to own your own business? I don't even know where to begin. Um, <laughs> it's just, so, you know, like when I set up my business in New Jersey, it was like, oh, I love photography. And I am going to be a portrait photographer. And then I realized everything that came with that. (laughs) You know, you need to be a marketer and you need to do your accounts and you have to do some form of graphic design and have a website. And and I suddenly realized, I mean, it's even more crazy now than it was, but I I think I just began with, I want to take pretty pictures. Right. Um, And... I suddenly realized that I had a love for the business side of it. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of people Uh are like, oh my God, I have to do all these things and I hate it. I mean, I don't like numbers. I outsource all of my like spreadsheets and like keeping track of income income and expenses. I outsource Mm -hmm. that, but I love tech. I love like downloading a new app and figuring out how it works or buying a new gadget and not reading the instructions and just figuring out myself. So I think that really gives me an advantage you know every time there's like I realize there's a new part that I need to integrate into my business um I'll just go off and do it and I know a lot of people do really struggle with that um setting up a business in Israel versus doing it in America um that I I'm still not I'm I'm kind of teetering on uh, the next level of Essek Moshe like I'm still mm-hmm. and I don't even know how you'd say that in, in English, English. It, because, once I've you get to a certain it. level I would say I don't know how to say it in English either once you get to a certain level of income you sort of skip yeah. up the ladder the ladder and there's a lot more right tax so I like keep hovering right um uh, so I think when I hit the next level maybe it'll be much more of a headache um but right now I think my you know, the biggest challenge that I found with being your own boss is a um, giving myself some grace and making sure that I give myself time off. Mm. Um, I don't sit down to, at my desk until 10 in the morning. I give myself time to do something for myself or something boring like laundry, whatever, but whatever it is, my day doesn't start until 10. Um, you know, I make sure that um I work, I do that Pomodoro method of not working. Like I work in like 25 minute like increments and then get up and move because I've recently been diagnosed with ADHD and I've found out ways to help me concentrate better and like work smarter, not work harder. Um, Interesting. Yeah, and having ADHD, I very often lose the train of thought of what I'm saying. But I think... (laughs) The, uh, another big struggle is like this whole like famine feast cycle that I've been going through like as I build my business you know you'll have these popular times of year when I was just doing photography there are times of year where people seem to think it's good to have a photo session like July and August which is a mm-hmm. terrible time <laughs> and then you'll get to November and people think that's not a good time it's the best time it's the best weather um so you have like quiet periods where you have to learn how to plan for that because it happens more or less every year so you know when I'm having a quiet period in November how can I fill that gap Mm -hmm. maybe you know digital creating digital products or having something online so that you don't have a drop in income when you came back to Israel and you decided to do this did you like speak to people about it or did you did you deliberate or did you just really sort of jump in yeah, that's another thing about me. I tend to jump in. Uh-huh. Very impulsive. Very, very impulsive. Um, 
our dryer just broke last night. I've already ordered a new one. I don't tend to do extensive research. I should. Um, I think as far as I remember, I just, I jumped in because as far as I was concerned, like I built that business over three years mm -hmm. and it was a really big success to the point where when I left, someone asked if he could buy my business from me. Wow. Like I haven't got anything to sell you. He wanted to buy my client list, which mm -hmm. I didn't think was the right thing to do. Um, and then I, I, you know, I came here and I was a small fish in a big pond, but I did just jump straight in. I remember I was, you know, still in the portrait photography world. So um, I'd had lots of different coaching and joined different groups and someone had given me the idea of like, just go out and do some photo sessions for free and then get in touch with a, um, pediatrician's office and offer to decorate his surgery walls with all the pictures of his patients. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's do that. And off I went. That was like the very first thing I did in probably the first month that I was here. So yeah, I tend to hit the ground running an idea comes apparently it's called uh you know like in personality types it's like a manifesting generator i think that's a very okay. good way to describe me um yeah so you have sort of unique you're sort of situated in a unique position in fact in the fact that not only are you yourself an entrepreneur um you consider yourself a photographer but you're an entrepreneur right and you're working with a lot of other entrepreneurs right yeah and you're trying you're helping them sort of grow their businesses what kind of like issues and struggles do you do you see that they have and are they similar to your struggles or do you think that for everybody has their own their own issues everyone has their own version but it all comes down to the same things over and over again i mean with the photo sessions i had someone say it to me yesterday i'm so unphotogenic so good luck with that like honestly you're like the 150th person that said that to me it doesn't scare me um you know you hear the same things over and over again and with the entrepreneurs you know in terms of like the coaching um before we jump into creating any kind of systems or talking about like how to use things or strategy or any of that we, we we start at the basics which is mindset and if you just leap into business without working on your mindset which is what i did um it comes back to bite you in the tuchas later on so at some point you have to deal with what is going on up here what do you believe about yourself what are all the stories that you've been telling yourself or people have told about you for years and it goes back to childhood absolutely goes back to childhood as a kid i was painfully shy the expression in England, stupidly, is wouldn't say boo to a goose. I don't even know what that means. But people used to say that about me. She wouldn't say boo to a goose. Um, I was painfully shy, wouldn't look anyone in the eye, wouldn't open my mouth, um, never gave my opinion, never spoke up in class, never imagined I would be sitting, facing a microphone, doing a podcast, you know. But um, I, that, it really, really helps people for them to understand when I say I've been there, I swear I mean it. You know, you people that say I've been there and I've been where you are and I see you and you think, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but like, seriously. Um, and there's no way around it. The only way, the way, the only way through the, what is it? The only way out is through. I think mm -hmm. that's the expression that you, right. you just have to go through the discomfort. And if you don't deal with all the, limiting beliefs and the imposter syndrome and all of these catchphrases that we hear um they become cliches because they're true if you don't deal with them they they stand in your way you know if i kept saying oh i can't do talking on camera where would i be like right. oh i can't show my face like so i had to sit and examine that i mean i, I worked with a coach on it and it was fascinating to find where why i believed that i didn't have anything valuable to say didn't want you know didn't want anyone to hear me or look at me or see me you know and we went back to like I don't know six-year-old me um and I get so it's very cool actually that my love of psychology is is finally being used interesting do you yeah. what what would be sort of like your are, are your your typical client right somebody's watching this and they say oh wow this is really cool and I I want to schedule a photo shoot do, do, is it, does it run the, the gamut or do you sort of have a, a focus on certain niches that, that you tend to that you tend to work with? Um, the people that tend to gravitate towards me, um, on the whole, they tend to be a little bit more reserved. Like there's a photographer that I follow. She dances through all the photo sessions. 
you know she'll just dance and get her clients to boogie with her and I'm just like that sound that for me would be terrifying if she was my photographer I think I would run and hide right so the people that gravitate towards me have more of my vibe Mm -hmm. um and that's just you know that makes sense totally makes sense to me um they you know they tend to be people that are they've on the whole they've established their their business but they want to start kind of taking it I hate the phrase but you know taking it to the next level as in like there's a certain point where you where I read a book my favorite book by Stephen Pressfield turning pro where he talks about that moment where you make that decision that this is not a hobby just because I've created this business myself doesn't mean it's a hobby you know there's some funny again like psychological thing going on where you think well I've just made this so it's not real I'm not working in an office or whatever so he talks about like that moment where you decide to take it seriously and even if you've only got 700 followers on Instagram talk like you've got 70,000 like you know if you start to take yourself seriously and you start to believe in yourself everyone else will and I feel like the conversations that I have with people when they come to me for coaching or photography it's the same it's like they've come to this realization that they need to do something different and it's something I talk about a lot on my Instagram account is like if you're going to keep doing the same thing you're going to keep getting the same results um and I find the people that I can't coach or I can't help are those people that just keep at the end of the day they want to stay stuck they don't realize it but they want to stay where they are they don't really want to move they don't really want to be helped um I feel like I stopped talking. Later. No, I think that's fantastic. I was going to ask you like a tip. I was going to ask you if you're like your top tip for entrepreneurs, but that was really good. To, the mindset, right? That, that you're, you know, to step it up, that you're, it's not a hobby anymore is something that I think I, I, I see it for myself, right? Sometimes you fall back that, you know, I'm 18 years old. I'm the youngest of the family. Everybody treats it like a baby. And then here I am, you know, with, thank God, a, a, you know, a, a, a good business, you know, taking people taking care of people's money, right? It's not like, it's not like a hobby, right? You're not like a little kid anymore, right? So you have to really, uh, yes. you really have to, and it, people get the the way that you sort of think about yourself is transmitted clearly to prospective clients, right? I would assume, right? If, if you treat yourself like you're an 18 year old, you know, hobbyist, then people are going to look at you that way as opposed to if you yeah, take people- yourself a little more seriously people pick up on your vibe for sure. Like I've been, you know, there's people I watch, someone that I watch on Instagram, who's a coach. She doesn't have a heap of followers. She's got maybe a few hundred followers, but she is going at it. Like she is Oprah Winfrey in the best of ways. Do you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, and it's amazing. And sometimes I forget and it doesn't matter how many followers she has. Like she is talking to the world or to her world or to her people. And um, that, that is how you have to look at it. It's not, about the numbers it's about create like creating a community making people I have this quote on my wall which is blurry you can't see them it's all about like what people are are craving is not perfection they want what does it say they they want a space full of love and character and creativity and soul they want to curl up and feel at home um that is you know heading into 2023 what everyone is talking about is like community building it's not b2b or b2c it's h to h human to human like we are all human beings we're all sick of sleazy marketing we're not idiots we know what you're doing with these sales tactics and we want to connect on a human level which suits me so well because my friends always laugh at me i can never play poker i don't have a poker face i'm just honest i just what you see is what you get. I don't have this kind of like online persona and then you meet me in real life and there'll be something else. Something else. That's really great. Yeah. And that's why I try and teach my clients as well. It's just turn up as who you are because that's, you know, people are going to meet you. They're going to expect that. So don't try and be like, I don't try to be like the dancing photographer. Right. That's great. Sarah, this was fantastic. How can people reach you? Oh gosh, I'm very findable. Very, very findable. I seem to be everywhere. <laughs> I have a website, which is my name, sarahranan.com. Um, and I make, I spend a lot of time on Instagram, but I am also on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, yeah, so that, so basically just if you search my name, Sarah Ranan, you will be able to find me in on all the platforms. And we'll put some of those links. We'll put some of those links also on the notes of the show so people can find it when they're tuning in Amazing. as well. 
Sarah, thanks so much for uh, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You've been tuning in to the Aaron Katzman Show. We speak about your life, your money, and your investments. If you like this program, please hit, please hit the like button below. Hit the like on pod, on the podcast as well. Um, if you've not yet done so, I know that's shocking, but there are a few people still out there who have not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel. Please do so as well. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll speak to you soon.